What's up, everyone? Welcome to an exclusive Insiders Chat with the team here at Alteris. I am your host. My name is Shabana Sayed. I am the Senior Content Manager on the marketing team. And for those of you who are not familiar with Alteris, we are on a mission to make financial advice accessible for everyone. But as we know, the industry still faces challenges when it comes to supporting women. So in this brief discussion, I am joined by two women colleagues of mine, Amanda Post and Michelle Schatz. Ladies, please introduce yourselves. My name is Amanda Post, and I'm a front-end engineer on the Altruist engineering team under the PAS team. And I got my degree in biology a couple of years ago, and I was working in the medical field and started as a software engineer with my first big software engineering job at Altruist. So it's my first introduction into both the finance industry and the technology industry. My name is Michelle Schatz, and I am currently the VP of Customer Success here at Altruist. Uh, I've actually had an extensive career in tech, SaaS, and startups, um, and but this is my first experience specifically in finance. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. So let's just dive right in. So the three of us are at very different points in our career, right, as well as expertise. So as you're thinking about your career and even how you started your career, what challenges have you both faced and are still facing as you move forward? So Amanda, if you want to take it away since you're the newbie. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so I feel incredibly blessed to have had started my first introduction into the fintech industry at such a warm and welcoming company who cares about women's rights and the rights of minorities and making financial advice accessible. So. Luckily, I haven't experienced too much discrimination or issues at my workplace here at Altruist, but there's definitely always a fight against the unconscious biases or subconscious biases against women and making sure that my voice is heard. And we do have, I would say, a more ratio leaning more towards men at Altruist right now, which we're working to improve. So I'm very appreciative for that, but definitely fighting to make sure that my voice is heard and uh, valued as equal uh, to my male colleagues. Just to kind of uh, dovetail on what Amanda just shared, I definitely think that as a woman um, in tech and in leadership especially, um, one of the things that I've been most cognizant of is that extra scrutiny and feeling like you're a bit more under the mit microscope um, you have to be extremely strategic in your communication style because of those unconscious biases. And what's interesting is those unconscious biases are often carried by both men and women um, within the workplace. So even when the ratios aren't as skewed as maybe in our current uh, environment, um, even though Altruist definitely is uh, overtly committed to diversity, um, I, th I still think that there is um, extra scrutiny and policing that you have to do um, to feel confident in your opinion, you know, feel like you can feel confident in expressing your opinions and that they will be received uh, as intended. Uh, I think that, you know, I don't know how many men sit around and think about um, if I'm assertive, will I be seen as bossy or emotional? Mm. I don't even know. I don't know if that's something that even crosses their mind or um, that they have that level of overthinking. Um, that goes into how you communicate. And, you know, often when the, you know, when the culture is very masculine, um, it is difficult being like one of the only two women in a room of, you know, eight male leaders. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm, I'm very cognizant of. And, th and that's been consistent throughout my career. That's really interesting. So, I mean, when it comes to like the unconscious biases and things like that, what advice have you given to your counterparts to like help rectify that, if any? I would say for female colleagues, it's important to always keep in mind that unconscious biases against women are deeply ingrained in our society, and that includes m men and women. Um, and to always remember that and remember that we're on the same side and we should support our fellow women no matter what and try very hard to undo any thoughts of feeling like they're competition or things like that. And as for uh, male or men colleagues, um, I guess a good thing for you to do to support women in the workplace is to read up 
perchance on unconscious biases and because it's hard to understand what unconscious bias is unless you uh, or read up about it and discover how it's affecting you in your daily life. And mm -hmm. I know that I, growing up, had all sorts of unconscious biases against women. And I always thought women were my competition. And um, it was only until I started reading, you know, feminist blog posts and started hearing about like microaggressions of sexism and how we see women in the world as less valuable or less intelligent. So it's really just about trying, making the effort to open up your eyes to how uh, this could have affected you and likely is affecting you. Yeah, just even in my role too, um, I feel really privileged like being on the marketing team and getting to do what I get to do because I get to connect with really incredible women on a daily basis and helping them like get the visibility, have the stage to share their stories, share their practices, all of those things, because that exposure just helps motivate, inspire more women so that we have more unity, right? There is enough room for everybody in this industry. We just yeah. have to make space for it and like, you know, open that door for people. And if, you know, if that door's not opening, we're gonna bust it down and take it anyway. So you might as well stand beside us and help us do it. And it's not just our generation, right? It's a generation coming behind us. We gotta definitely put our hand out and help them come forward because it's about them. I've been lucky that in my career up to now, I've not felt in competition with other women, mm -hmm. but what's most interesting about the mentors and relationship that I've had with other women is the level of coaching and um, feedback that you get on how to conform to the stereotypes and biases that are comfortable, like um, trying to fit into the male paradigm, yep. which is you know things like being concerned if you're being assertive or voicing your opinion that you're gonna come across as bossy mm -hmm. um, or that you're gonna be intimidating or um, that you know that you know in a leadership position, um, your ideas won't be um, heard depending on how you present them. Um, whereas, you know, a, 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 a colleague of yours that's a man who presented the same way wouldn't have any issues. Um, and so it's very interesting that a lot of the coaching that I've gotten in my career has been around how to be more um, homogenous. Mm -hmm. if you will. And so. it, it didn't feel as much like what I was getting was a celebration of my diversity. There's another uh, set of scrutiny that I think is really interesting, which is how women are viewed with their uh, work life, how they do work life integration. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean by that is a lot of times as a woman in my career over time, I've been asked questions that no one would ever fathom asking a man. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I've definitely been hit. like, I remember having a male colleague at one time in a previous organization um, who I had recently um, had uh, my second child. And so I had two young children and my male colleague turned to me, we were working, um, there was a group of us working and he was like, I just, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you work these hours and work so much just having young kids. And I was dumbstruck when he asked the question because he had two children exactly the same age as my children. And wow. so to me, it was like, why, why is that an okay question? Why is that even an okay statement? Um, and nowadays you hear people say, you know, family first and family matters. And, um, but it still feels a bit like when a man steps away to spend time with his family, he's seen as a hero, look at him balancing. Yeah, but as a woman, yeah. you, you still feel that scrutiny, like, will I be perceived as less committed? Mm -hmm. um, you know, will I be perceived as not being able to keep up? Yeah, that's, uh, I really appreciate what you said. It, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, like, be you and the world will adjust, right? Because it has to, like, when you show up as yourself, things around you have to shift because the pressure on women is just insane. And it really is not fair. Like when you show up and your counterparts in the same situation, yet somehow everybody's like, how are you able to do this? Well, mm -hmm. why aren't you asking him that too? And like yeah. you said, like he becomes a hero when he's like, oh, I'm here for my family or whatever the case is. But 
you know, for women, it's just like, I don't know how you do it. And then there's one other topic that, you know, as we were thinking about this, so there's like how you communicate the tonality, just the, the unconscious biases, the microaggressions, which is the example of like, why would anybody ask me how I do it with my children when my male colleagues also have children the same age within tech and especially startups, there's, there is this sense of ageism where, um, you know, there's all, it's already prevalent. Like I think that tech and startups in particular, um, have, a, a, an unwritten ageism bias in them as well. And then add in the layer on top of that as being a woman. And I literally in, in my career had a, a female leader who I respect so tremendously, tell me that I should dye my hair so that I would be seen as more relevant. You mm -hmm. because, well, you know, and it was from the best place. Like this was not someone who was trying to tear me down, right? right. And so, so th these are the waters that you're, you know, that we're trying to navigate. And to what degree, you know, um, counter our counterparts who are men are experiencing these things it doesn't feel it's at the same um level like it, it's you know they're, they're not facing as much um i should i should correct to say depending on like you know the level of representation i think that um definitely there's different populations that are f facing different types of microaggressions but there is a lot of this unspoken like you know you know, people ask you just the strangest questions, like um, that I just, it's very surprising that they think it's okay to ask that. But then at the same time, it's like leveraging those as a dialogue to be like, well, here's why that's not a great question. Yeah, totally. Cause it's just sad that that's, we're, wow, well, that's, that's crazy. It's just, <laughs> it's like, I know you can't make it up. It's, it's really, un it's unfortunate that she even felt comfortable or thought it was okay to say that. Cause she, like you said, she probably thought she was coming from the best place. But when you really take a step back, it's like, whoa, what am I saying? Like, would I ever say this to a man? Like, Hey, you should dye your mm -hmm. hair. Like, you know, it's like kind of fit the mold and stuff. You never would, that would never cross your mind. So why is it okay that we're able to say that to women? Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think it came from the most sincere place right. of the ageism that she herself was experiencing. I don't think it was like a, it was nothing more than the most sincere, like, this is what the world is you. like. Yeah. I'm not relevant if I don't do this and I care about you and I'm worried that sure. you'll face that too. Yeah. Um, and so that's what's heartbreaking is that this person who is one of the most competent people I have ever known even has to think about that. Let right. alone think it's something that, you know, we all have to talk, like we need to talk about it. But the really important thing that you had mentioned though, is like when those moments do happen, use it as a teachable moment. Like yeah. use that as an opportunity to really dive in and be like, Hey, let's break this down and like understand this so that we can like rethink how we approach things going forward because it's going to be a domino effect because you don't like the fact that she asked you that I'm sure somebody at some point said something to her yeah exactly otherwise like why would she say that to you it wouldn't have even like crossed her mind so it's coming from somewhere else so we got to use those as opportunities to really stop it and reset it I feel like a common trend with these stories about uh teaching women to kind of soften the way that they speak to men so that they don't come off as bossy and Michelle, you should dye your hair darker so that you should be more relevant. It all kind of ties together with the common theme of the unconscious bias of thinking that women are inferior or thinking, you know, comparing a man and a woman, it's worse if a woman does the exact same thing. And I think that all this unconscious bias stuff is, or these suggestions rather are kind of trimming the leaves rather than ripping out the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we've been spending our time kind of trying to survive in this men dominated world where women are considered inferior and that's just how it's always been. And that kind of ties in with altruist goal of kind of disrupting the finance and technology industry. And we're mm -hmm. questioning like the finance industry industry has been this way for ages, but should it be that way? And that's why we're trying to change it and make things better and make financial advice more accessible. And I think that we need to take a similar approach 
with things like women's rights in the workplace and make sure that instead of trimming the leaves, we're, we're really inspecting, like, mm -hmm. why are we suggesting to women that they soften the way that they speak to men so that they don't come off bossy? Why are we suggesting that women dye their hair so that they don't come off wrong to men? And the answer is that we, we need to inspect the root cause of the problem. And it's that as a society, we value women as less. And so we need to, like you said, Shabana, take those moments and use them as teachable experiences where we really investigate why is this happening? Oh, it's because we don't really value women as much as we do men. And we need to get people into leadership that believe that women are as valuable as men and are a valuable asset to the team mm -hmm. as they are, not changed so that they fit into a man's world or a the, the finance world as it's been for mm -hmm. years and years. And we just need to embrace that ideology and make sure that we're inspecting the way things were and and revolutionizing them. Yeah, I love that, Amanda, because uh, at the end of the day, we all came from a woman, right? Exactly. Like, we were better moms. So we got to like protect that. We have to celebrate that. We have to honor that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely agree with Amanda wholeheartedly that um, we definitely, instead of ripping out the leaves, need to look at what the root causes are and yeah. um, go towards the root. And I, you know, just want to take a moment to say that's one of the biggest things that attracted me to altruists to begin with mm -hmm. was, um, you know, when I was looking for that next step in my career and I had um, a, the, the great fortune of having um, a couple opportunities to consider, altruist was someplace that had a mission that truly spoke to me about the democratizing of the financial, you know, of financial advice and the financial advisement space and being able to reach people who didn't feel um, that they were, that it was available to them or worthy of it or that they mattered. Um, and they definitely have, like I said, this overt commitment to uh, democratization and um, diversifying and transformation. Um, and so as much as these are the things that we're dealing with and they're not great, I feel really privileged to be working somewhere where these kind of conversations are encouraged and celebrated um, and that there are people who um, are coming to the table on their own, not just the group that's saying I should have a seat at that table, you know, the proverbial table, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, but the people who are at that table saying, hey, I want to I want you to be at this table and I, I want to help and I'm not sure where to start. Um, and I'm committed to this too. And let's have these conversations and let's create this kind of transformation. Um, so I think that that's, that's something that speaks very much to me about the root of who altruist is as an organization and as a, as a community. Yeah, I, I got to echo your sentiment too, Michelle. Like I, I feel very blessed and honored that I have an opportunity to be at altruist because my perception of the financial industry prior to coming to it wasn't good. Like, um, you know, at a young age, I really wanted to like get my financial like foundation set up. And many times like I was met with like, you're too young, you don't make enough money, whatever. But one specific uh, gentleman decided to tell me that, sweetheart, you should leave this up to your husband or your boyfriend. And that literally was just like, all right, forget this. Like I'm done. I'm going to go educate myself and like figure out how to do this on my own. Um, but I look back and yeah, while I did it, I do wish I had somebody there to help me, you know, like make it even stronger. And so coming to Altruist and being part of this team and being part of this mission, um, it just has become even more of a personal mission too, especially through my, the, the content that we're creating because it's so important to let people know there are really good advisors who want to help you, who want to stand next to you, who want to like make sure that you are set up for success. Because, you know, when I was looking, it was really hard to find them. And now we have an opportunity to really like highlight them and help them get in front of people who really need them, their mm -hmm. help. You know? So I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful to like alters, especially John Sienna, shout out to him. Like, uh, you know, for really bringing me in and just giving me that safe space to put my best self forward and just be imaginative and be outspoken and all of those things. It's so cool to be a part of a team where you can, like you said, Michelle, like you can be yourself and then yeah. see what happens around you. And it's really incredible to see what's, what's coming and what's, you know, in the future for altruist. 
Yeah, I, I think having that psychological safety is enormous. Yeah, uh, is to know that you're in a space where you have that support and that psychological safety, and that there is a commitment that makes such a big difference. And you know, it's you know, huge transformations come with small, consistent effort over time. Right. It's not one magic wand or one magical uh, interaction that's going to do it, but it's every conversation that we have like this, every time we take a step back and we question um, and we open, you know, the, the floor for more dialogue um, and we have organizations like Altruist and we have people like, uh, like, you know, like yourself and Amanda, um, you know, our other colleagues as well. Like it's, it's all of these, you know, we call them microaggressions. Like, I guess these are the, the micro commitments to transformate, like micro um, efforts that start to create a big transformation over time. For sure, for sure. Ladies, you guys are amazing. Um, before I let you go, I feel like we've talked for like another hour, but I know we're like <laughs> short on time. But before I let you go, any last words of wisdom for our audience or for any girls out there that are watching this or women? I guess what I would just say, and it's not necessarily, I mean, obviously this message is to inspire women to stay the course and stay passionate and know that there is hope out there. But I feel like this is also useful for, I mean, for everyone. So to my women out there, stay the course, stay positive. Um, it can be really hard to be in these male dominated industries, but um, their change is happening. There are companies out there like Altruist that care about women's rights and are taking steps to remedy what has been happening. And to the men out there, learn up on unconscious biases. Just because you don't beat women doesn't mean you don't have unconscious biases. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the main thing is that sometimes people don't introspect and inspect themselves just because, you know, I'm, I don't beat my wife, so whatever. But all of us are susceptible to these unconscious biases that come from society. And also to the business owners and the higher ups at companies. It's important to prioritize um, valuing diversity in ethnicity and gender across the board. And really it's easiest when it comes from the top. So just <laughs> remember that this is important and uh, your work valuing diversity could have massive impacts. Thanks, Absolutely. A hundred percent. And I, I think for myself in closing, I would just say that um, you know, every action that we make that's positive towards this transformation matters. Um, and so even though it might feel like you're only, you know, making inches of progress, those inches matter collectively. Um, and I think that even beyond that, I would say above and above everything else is really to um, trust yourself, you know, as, as women, trust yourself, respect yourself, respect what you have to bring to the table um, and look for that in your peers, you know, and approach that with your peers um, and be open to dialogue and be open to supporting each other. Uh, and I think just know that you're not alone. Uh, and there's, you know, huge communities of both men and women uh, who are committed to, um, you know, furthering the causes of diversity um, and, and look for that because it's out there. I think, what was it? Mr. Rogers said, always look for the helpers. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, and just to add to that, like anybody who is like up and coming in the industry, like if you see someone that's doing something that you are really into or interested in, don't be shy to reach out, man or woman. Chances are you're gonna end up with a mentor or at least they'll point you in the right direction to help you get the ball rolling on your journey. Because yeah, we literally, we're in a position where we really do need to like reach back and help the next generation come up with us so that we can really make a change in this industry. So with that ladies, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for taking time to chat with me. And so it's clear, obviously the road in front of us is far from done. We have a lot of work to do in regards to representation and equity. Yes, equity, not just equality, 
but I am very hopeful because now we're having these conversations in a public forum so we can help ourselves, help others, make a difference as we move forward. And before I let you guys go, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the women who took time to participate in Altruist Women's History Month campaign. You guys are amazing. We love you. We appreciate you, support you, and celebrate you, and we will continue to do so. And if you are looking for a new job or career change, check out altruist.com slash career. We would love to have you join us. And from all of us here at Altruist, we are wishing you a very happy and empowered Women's History Month. And be sure to take time to appreciate a woman in your life and educate yourself because education changes everything. Peace.